And it wasn't that at all. All it was was a quiet impression in our heart. No audible voice, just that quiet impression, that nudge, that growing conviction. But as you grow in the Spirit, you begin to discern that that is the voice of God working in you. And so preachers so often speak about it in leaving the impression that it's some dramatic event. And sometimes it is a dramatic event, but very often, most frequently, it's singularly undramatic. It's a still small voice, as Elijah had to learn again after the great victory at Mount Carmel, and we'll come to that in one of the sessions. And so, the uh, important emphasis from the beginning is that God is willing to speak to you, and He is not too busy to communicate, He's not too reluctant to do it, or too holy to speak to us. And we don't therefore need to get on our knees and beg Him to speak to us, uh, uh, although in our spirit of humility and humbleness of heart, God will be more ready to speak to us, but we have to trust Him that He is the communicating God. And so, we need to grasp from the very beginning, the problem is not with God speaking, the issue is about us listening. That's why I've called this listening to God. And it is about prophetic listening. Now, I want to establish the context for that. Prophetic listening. When I say prophetic listening, I don't mean that uh, there are different forms of listening and prophetic listening is one, one form of listening. What I mean is that in listening to God, it's a process which is part of the wider prophetic manifestation of God. In other words, what I'm saying is this, all listening to God is prophetic. It's part of the prophetic process. And so this series uh, is also about prophecy, pr the prophetic gift and the prophetic ministry. And we will, you will see how that relates. But now, this shows us that when we come to God to listen to Him as part of this prophetic process, that it's an active, not a passive thing. When we listen to God, we are waiting for His Word to activate us. And there is an active waiting on God. It's not just a passive thing. Now, you have to still your heart, and there is a passive element, but it's not just sitting back waiting for God to do something. It's an active listening to God. It's seeking Him. And so often when the Bible talks about seeking God, this is what it means. It's talking about being active in your pursuit of God. So we listen to God, not just like listening to a piece of music to be entertained. Rather, we listen to Him as a trainee pilot would listen to His pilot, His instructor, to be directed. Also, this shows us that listening to God is a relationship. It's not just a mechanical function. So we don't listen to God rather like we listen to the anonymous helpline operator on the telephone. Rather, we listen to Him like children listening to their parents. It's a, it's a relationship issue. And again, I want to stress, we listen to God continuously, not occasionally. And uh, that's the only way in which we can come online, so to speak. It's like hooking up your computer to the internet and being online 24 hours of the day. And this is what's so exciting. You never know when he's going to speak to you. In fact, he's speaking to you far more often than you think. And, uh, and we'll have to show you about this, but I'm not talking about everybody going crazy and walking around, you know, with spiritual antenna up like this all the time saying, what are you doing? Oh, I'm listening to God. Oh, no, you're just being weird. You're being weird. But God is speaking to you in relationship with you and sharing with you continuously. And then this also shows us that the whole uh, process of listening to God is rooted in the prophetic. In other words, we listen to God like the prophets of old. 
in an intimate, anointed, servant relationship, ready to act on God's words. And so let's have a look a little more in more detail at prophetic listening. The English word prophet, prophecy, or prophesy, and prophetic, all these words, are derived from two Greek words, pro, meaning forth, and phemi, meaning to speak prophemi. They signify speaking forth. So the prophet speaks forth the mind and the counsel of God. And so the phrase prophetic listening not only points to the place of listening in the prophetic process, but it also underlines the fact that we are listening to the forth speaking of the mind and the counsel of God. And there will be times when we have to pass that message on and we need to speak for him and complete that prophetic process. And so prophetic listening is not like physical listening to the sounds that come into the ear. It's a spiritual exercise. We are listening spiritually. Our spiritual ears are tuning in by concentration, by faith. And, and when we do this, we are receiving the personal mind and counsel of God, His revealed word and His revealed will. These things are coming to us through this prophetic process. Now, while of course I'm going to offer in this teaching some practical guidance and some biblical principles about the way we listen to God, yes, I'm going to do that because I want to teach you how to listen to God, but the emphasis you need to know as I prepared this and got it ready for you, the focus is on God speaking, on the way He communicates His Word and His will. If we understand the way God does it, then we will know how to listen. It's, it's very simple. If you understand how satellite television works, then you are likely to know what to do in order to receive the signal. If you know that a satellite television operates by receiving a signal from the sending satellite, which is, and the signal is captured in those disks, those dishes, and then put through a machine, which is about as technical as I'm going to get today, which interprets that signal in a form that is capable of being received on your television. Then you know you need a dish, a decoder, and a television, a monitor. And so you get those three, you connect them together, have somebody else do it, and then you're ready to switch on. And so if you know how a communication operates, then you are likely to know what to do in order to receive it. So the emphasis will be on God and God speaking, which for me is far more exciting than just concentrating on us listening. Listening to whom? And for what purpose? But if we know that we're listening to God and how He speaks and the purpose that lies behind His desire to speak to us and the purpose that He has in us listening to Him, then I think it's all going to fall into place. Now, this means that prophetic listening is not listening to silence. That's some kind of mystical, new age thing. And you meet these people and they say, shh, what's the matter? I'm listening. Listening to what? I'm listening to the silence. Now, there is a, a real sense in which we need to tune out in order to tune in. But this isn't just some mystical emptying of your mind so that any evil thing can pop any evil thought there. This is focusing on God, opening up our hearts to receive the Holy Spirit and to receive the Spirit's testimony. Now, I don't know what it's like for you, but I have a few practical points whenever I need to listen to God, as well as training myself to hear Him throughout the whole day in the hustle and the bustle and the busyness, especially when I'm ministering. And I'm ministering, I'm listening to God as much as I possibly can, and I'm not even listening to myself so much as listening to the Holy Spirit so that I can receive what He is wanting to share and I can be led and guided and directed. But as well as that, you are never going to learn how to listen to God in the busy public place until you've learned to still your heart in the quiet private place. And for me, it's quite desperate at times. And if I'm really wanting to hear from God at a level of depth, 
apart from those gracious times when God can just drop a thought into my heart which is so significant and it might be a, a, a real life-changing experience, a life-changing word, as well as that time, those times when I'm seeking God, it takes me at least an hour, my friend, just to, just to get my body quiet. Then it takes me another hour to get my soul hushed down. And then it takes me another hour before my spirit really, really is in tune with God at a level of depth. That's how it is for me. And so I can spend two to three hours waiting on God, and then, oh, it's just like somebody's cleaned the line. Somebody's cleaned the wax out of my ears, and then the sense of God's presence is really strong. So we must practice the presence of God like that on, uh, regularly. And the more you wait on God in the private place, then the more you're going to be sensitive to Him in the public place. And so, the emphasis must be not just on the techniques of listening, but on the God who is always communicating. Now, in this Listening to God uh, series, like the other sort of the Spirit topics, I spent a lot of time founding this, grounding it in the Old Testament. And that's very, very important. In fact, it's an important feature of all of this sort of the Spirit series. And so we're going to be understanding how God revealed himself to and through the Old Testament prophets. We're also going to learn from the New Testament, the early church prophets, and how they listened to God. And we're going to see how this prophetic listening should be applied to us in the church today. Now, in parts 5 and 6, we'll be looking at the prophetic application of our listening. And uh, in, uh, well, we're doing... Uh, seeing how this is applied to the church and the prophetic foundation in parts 5 and 6. And then we see the prophetic application of this to our lives in parts 7 to 9.